you've decided to visit Tokyo. Excellent choice. Excellent. It's probably the coolest city in the world, but you know, that's mostly my opinion. What is fact, however, is that it is the biggest city in the world. And as another fun little fact, the entire population of my country, Canada, about 40 million people, is encompassed by those living in and around this absolutely ridiculously massive megaopolis. All the more reason as to why where you stay in Tokyo makes all of the difference as far as the trifecta of travel is concerned. Cost, convenience, and proximity to all the cool stuff. You know, you're going on a trip, you're going on vacation, you want to see, do, and experience as much as possible in the most efficient way possible and the least stressful way possible. So, let's check out the map real quick. Here we have three maps that should help us get the whole picture. Now, on the left, we have a map of all of the special wards in Tokyo, subsidies, districts, whatever you want to call them. That is what we are primarily concerned with. On the top right, we have a map of the famous JR Yamanote line that circles through some of the hottest spots in Tokyo. You've probably heard the name, you're familiar with this rail system. It is heavily utilized by locals and tourists alike to get just about anywhere in Tokyo. And as a result, it's worth noting that it gets extremely crowded during rush hour. On the bottom right is a map of Tokyo's subway system, which accompanies the trains rather nicely and works equally seamlessly, even though it looks like a giant mess of jumbled pasta, I promise you it's not nearly as complicated as it looks, and all we're really going to use that map for is point two on our list. So let me give you all of the value up front if that is what you are looking for. Shinagawa is easily my number one pick as the best special ward in Tokyo to stay in as it takes all of the boxes as far as I'm concerned. My number two spot, and especially if you are coming from Narita Airport, is the Ueno Asakusa area, which loses some points in convenience, especially Asakusa, because you do need to utilize that subway system, as I just mentioned. But where it loses points in convenience, it gains them back in cost, sometimes by a rather large margin, especially when compared with cities or districts rather, such as Shinjuku, that are very popular and sometimes can have elevated costs as a result. Speaking of Shinjuku, that is my number three spot on the list, but with a slight caveat that is rather important. If you plan on staying mostly in Tokyo and your primary concern is with hitting up the nightlife in Shibuya, Shinjuku, Ikebukuro, Roppongi, you've probably heard all those names, there's so much stuff happening in just those places that maybe three trips is not going to be enough to explore everything they have to offer. Maybe you want to go to Ebisu for some high-end sushi, maybe you want to go to Trendy Harajuku for the fashion, the cute ice cream gelato that I had in my top three day trips from Tokyo right at the start of that video. Those things are fantastic and Shinjuku will serve you well as far as that style of travel is concerned. However, while Shinjuku's train station is the busiest train station in the world, sadly it does not host Shinkansen or bullet trains, meaning that if you do want to take day trips out of Tokyo, you're going to be wasting quite a bit of time every morning trying to get to Shinagawa station, which happens to be the number one pick on our list. Surprise, surprise. So, let's go over a few of the details as to my reasoning for these choices. You can take this information and apply it to your style of travel to create the most ideal scenario for yourself. Even if you completely disagree with me, at least then you know what you want and which direction to go with. So, let's talk Shinagawa. We have the real map up in front of us right here and we happen to be at Haneda Airport. And speaking of airports, whether you're flying into Haneda Airport or Narita Airport, there is a direct express train that stops at Shinagawa Station. If you're coming from Narita, you can take the regular train, which is about $10 for a one-way ticket. And depending on when your flight arrives though, avoid this option at all costs if it lines up with rush hour. Last thing you want to do after a long flight is to drag a suitcase around through the sardine can experience that happens to be local traffic after business hours. Now, the Narita Express is a reservation-only train that costs $30 for a one-way ticket, so $20 more, 
but it's worth every penny if you can avoid that disaster of an experience. Think business class on a flight with dedicated storage for your luggage. Now, if you're coming from Haneda, it's even better. It takes about 15 minutes by train and you can basically get off your flight and hop into the shower, figuratively speaking, but really it's close enough. So again, here we are at Haneda Airport. Let's fly on over to Shinagawa Station, which as you can see is not very far at all. It's literally just outside the area where the airport is located. And once you reach Shinagawa Station, your accommodations are potentially and quite literally across the street. And the reason I say potentially is if we zoom into this area a little bit, and if we pan up a little bit, you can see that there is a lot of residential area as well, which does contain quite a few Airbnb options. Now, if you prefer the hotel experience because you're fed up with the Airbnb taxes and additional fees and having to you know, take care of your own laundry and clean the house and look after the pets and all the other stuff that Airbnb suddenly decided to tack on to your bill, well, you can choose one of these properties. The vast majority of these high rises are going to be hotels. Again, they are literally across the street from the station. It doesn't get much better than that. You cross this little bridge, you walk for five minutes and you're in the lobby of your hotel. Now, I'm not affiliated with any of these properties. Clearly, I have what, like 300 subs, but I have stayed at the Grand Prince Hotel Takanawa, and I must say the service was impeccable. The rooms were impeccable, and I rather enjoyed this massive garden in the back where you can go for a nice jog in the evenings. And that takes me to one of the only potential drawbacks to Shinagawa, if you can even call it that, depending, of course, on your style of travel. It is a business district, meaning you're not gonna find that much nightlife within this zone. But if you prefer a nice quiet place to return to after exploring all day or partying in the evening or whatever, this is the ideal setting once again. And I must say, I rather enjoyed the view of the Tokyo Tower, which you can see in the distance right there from that hotel. So one tip here is if you do stay in one of these taller hotels and if you can request a room with that view, it is absolutely spectacular at night. Now, just because it is a business district, it doesn't mean there's not much to do here in terms of food. There's a ramen alley, which is literally outside of the station. You can go try some fantastic noodles after the unfortunate food experience you may have had on your flight. There are also some Michelin star restaurants that are nestled within some of these hotels. Literally, it is Tokyo, so your options are infinite. You can decide where you want to go, where you want to stay based on what you are trying to accomplish. I just hope that this information is useful to you. So let's jump back to our other map. To rectify that one little drawback about the nightlife in Shinagawa, worry not, you are less than 10 minutes away from Shibuya via the Yamanote line. Now, if we take a look at that green line one more time, every dot, every stop on that train line is about two minutes and change in travel time. It's not an exact science, but it's a close enough approximation that you can depend on. Even Shinjuku Station, as a result, is only about 16 minutes away. Now, the Yamanote line shuts down at 1 a.m. every night and resumes at 4.30 in the morning. So if you want to party all night, be aware of that. Although, because you are staying in Shinagawa, you won't have to sell a kidney to pay for that cab ride back. And if you're feeling adventurous and you want to get some fresh air, it's only about an one hour or so by foot from Shibuya or the Ebisu area. And uh, Google Maps is definitely your friend if you choose to go with that option. Now headed to the right on this line, we have Hamamatsu Cho, which is just two stops away from Shinagawa. If you want to go up to an amazing observatory at the International Trade Building and then walk to Tokyo Tower for even more observatory action, the stop is just five minutes away. Tokyo Station, just another couple stops to the right, is the other station in Tokyo where the Shinkansen stops. 
And they also happen to have the most insane food gallery in what is basically an underground city slash shopping mall. And Ginza, the super high-end shopping district, is just a few minutes by foot from Tokyo Station. And just a few more minutes by foot from Ginza, you can find the famous fish market if you want to get some good eats. Now, Akihabara, the anime gaming and electronic mecca, is, is just five minutes up the line from there, and that takes us to Ueno. Ueno is the other major transportation hub, especially and part of number two on our list. If you are not interested in the nightlife and you are coming on a family trip, Ueno and Asakusa offer a lot in that regard. I already mentioned that there are Quite a few accommodation options in this area that won't break the bank, including some very nice three and four star hotels. You have Sensoji Temple for that nice traditional experience, that little historical Buddhist infusion, if you will. Tokyo Sky Tree is in the area for even more observatory action. Weno Park with its very nice zoo, lots of eateries, and a far more organic and traditional environment, as I had just mentioned. You are also incredibly close to Disneyland if you do want to check out the Japanese experience there. And you are still very, very close to that Tokyo Station and Akihabara, which will give you that Shinkansen access if you do want to go for day trips and also the gaming, anime, entertainment, respectively. Now, if you are staying in Asakusa, you can take the Ginza subway line to Ueno and then continue to use the Yamanote line. But the Ginza line has the added benefit of going all the way to Shibuya Station. Now this is going to be about a 30 minute ride one way, but it does still provide you with a direct route to that part of town without much fuss. So it is slightly more inconvenient in terms of travel time to the party districts, but if that's not really that important to you, it offers tremendous value and you still again have that access for day trips from Tokyo Station if you are using the JR passes via the Shinkansen. Now that I've talked your ear off for far too long, it would be a little bit unfair to not mention our third choice on this list before wrapping up the video, even though all the information I have provided does apply in part to Shinjuku as well, including the Narita Express. The Narita Express does stop at all three of our locations, Ueno, Shinagawa, and Shinjuku. And as far as what you can do in Shinjuku, the list is far too expansive, especially considering the proximity of this district to Harajuku, Shibuya. Again, you have Ikebukuro just north of Shinjuku and even Roppongi is within reach. So I will let you guys take a look at what you're interested in and find those particular nuggets for your itinerary. But just a few mentions as far as daytime activities are concerned. Definitely check out the Shinjuku Go and National Gardens. Absolutely stunning, especially if you happen to go there during the spring when all the flowers are in bloom. 500 yen entry for adults, and I believe for children under certain age, it is free entry. You have the amazing Metropolitan Building Observatory, which is a fantastic option during the daytime and the nighttime, and it is free. Sadly, the Robot Cafe has closed as a result of COVID. At least that was the case the last time I checked. I don't believe it's reopened, but you may want to check into that if you are interested in that activity. You can do the Mario Kart. You can check out Golden Guy for the amazing mini bar experience, or you can try the Park Hyatt for the Lost in Translation bar experience. Honestly, the list of places to eat to stay is just about infinite in this part of town. So I hope that this information at least helped to provide you with some breadcrumbs to kind of help you plan your trip or at least guide you in the right direction. I've talked far too long, so I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you have watched all the way to the end, again, please consider subscribing for additional content. And I'll see you in the next one.